Hey you guys, today I'm going to be teaching you how to make an animation on Fire Alpaca. So just a disclaimer, I'm not a professional animator, so you would probably do better off reading like actual books, but these are just like the absolute, absolute basics. So right now I'm opening a previous animation I had already made beforehand. It's a running animation of Yellow Diamond from uh, Ozeki no Kuni. So before you start your animation, you'd want to keep in mind what you want your character to do, which character you're doing, and um, how you want the motion to come across. So inside of this one, obviously she's running, and there's a slow zoom in. So something very important, like really, really important, is that you have onion skin mode on, because as you can see, if you turn it off, um, all of the frames basically just overlap onto each other, and it's just a complete mess that's not going to be good. But when you turn on onion skin mode, there's a reason why it's called that, you can see the layers, you can see them separately, you can see the one before and the one after in red and green. So basically this really helps you animate, and trust me, you're going to really want to turn this on if you need to animate. So, now you can see all of my layers. Um, usually I'd name these layers, but uh, it's not a full-blown animation, it's just an animatic type, more choppy, more sketchy, you know, all that. So I suppose that that's the fanciest we'll be doing for now. So then, there's also this thing which is called a smear frame. It's also known as a smudge or like motion blur, but it's usually used in animation very often. So if you search it up, you'll find out all of these types of images. At first, they look really funny, but trust me, you won't spot them just by looking at the animation. You'll have to pause it to a certain degree. Because um, in animation, all of these frames, which can be pictures in themselves, they're only seen in the blink of an eye. That's why they're called frames per second, because you know you only see a few frames per second. So you won't see these, but it really helps translate the motion of the character to your brain. Okay, that sounds really fancy. It's not that fancy at all. Uh, but this is my lazy smear frame. I uh, didn't add much to it, but it still helps. It still adds to the animation. So I suggest adding those if you want your um, motion to be, to be translated. Okay, so I wanted her face to change from a relatively calm face to a surprised face as the arrow is coming towards her. So as you can see, she's smiling right now, she looks pretty chill, everything is fine. Um, so she starts to notice, you can see the pupil move. So if you know how to animate a circle moving, you'll probably know how to animate a pupil moving inside of the eye. So as you can see, her expression changes, her mouth goes from a smile to a more gaping face, and then her pupils get much smaller as she realizes it's coming towards her. And I do this like dramatic zoom in thing, where she closes her eyes in um, anticipation. Okay, so this is the part of the animation where I do a dramatic zoom out, which um, kind of contrasts with the zoom in I had in earlier. So how you make this effect is you use a transform tool and to create the illusion of zooming out, you first have to make the um, image look bigger. So from that point of perspective, it's like, um, it gets smaller when it zooms out. So then you use motion blur, you can use 20 if you still want your image to be um, clear enough to see. But if you want to smudge out the smaller details, you can use 40 or 60 and it will do a great job of making it very blurred. So you want it more blurred the more you're zoomed in. And as you zoom out, it gets less blurry. You'll see the effect this has later once I show you the autoplay on Fire Alpaca 3 mode. If you go to the top of your bar and click autoplay, you can get a preview of what your animation will look like and you also get to toy around with the frames per second. So frames per second is what I mentioned earlier. It basically shows how many frames are shown per second. So the one I chose for this one was 8 frames per second, which in most cases would be pretty choppy. Um, a lot of animators go for 12, some even go for 24. Anyway, once you're done adding your individual tweaks and little changes to your animation, you can choose the option export as an animated GIF, and if you have the latest version of File Alpaca, you'll have this, choose where to send it, and also type in the frames per second if you want. So depending on your computer type, you can also view the frames which you have individually. For some um, animations that you like, such as anime TV shows, you can also download GIFs of 
some clips from that show and then study each individual frame. Maybe you can have some pointers to add to your own animations. But anyways, that's only what I do. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to make an animated GIF or an animated short in Fire Alpaca.